Magic Mike the strip club guy, right? Yeah, that was the stripper movie. Yeah, and and I was in that. Tell me about that. One. I wasn't that. I, I didn't Did get you naked, dance? Mike. You I didn't get naked, Mike. You danced. None of this came story. off. It all stayed on. What's funny though is when people recognize me from that movie, and then they tell their friends, and they're like, "He was in Magic Mike," and then they look at me like, "What happened? You know, was it CGI? How did? Like, no, I wasn't. No, I was in it, but I wasn't in. You know." <laughs> What's up, everybody? You guys, welcome to this episode of Hot Boxing with Triple C, aka Henry Cejudo. And I'm Mike Titan. We're here with Fluffy. <laughs> hey, Gabe, how you doing, brother? I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing good, Mike. I'm doing good. Hey, I, when I, I first came here, I knew who you were, but when my son said he knew who you were, I was like, "How the hell? He's ten years old. How the hell he know Gabriel um, Galices? <laughs> how, how do you say that name?" Again? Normally, I correct people, but in this case, I'm gonna let it go, Come Mike. Come on, man. <laughs> Help me out. Iglesias. There you go. I had to see Take it. two. You got it. I had to see it. If I don't see it, it's going to be all type of shit. You go, are you happy I didn't, didn't say beauty queen or some shit? I wouldn't know. <laughs> you got. You said it pretty good. How you, you doing, said, man? I'm I'm doing really, really nice. It's an honor to be here at the ranch. Oh, thank you. It's an honor smoking with I don't know you. if people know that's where this is at, but I just... Yeah, this is the ranch. Okay. This is where I work out for my fights. This is just where I get prepared. This is also my office. We do our business, and this we also do hot boxing. It's awesome. You have a lot. You have more cameras in here than a sitcom. Hey, listen, these guys <laughs> just started paying us, man. We used to do this for you know, free. <laughs> now we get paid for this shit. We got commercials and shit, right? We got commercials, right? Let's see, but listen, right? I've been here for long. How long? In five years, we've been here. About. I don't know these motherfuckers. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, Gabe, I don't know these motherfuckers. You don't know is, nobody that's in here? They just, they just started. Like, well, how long y'all got been here? <laughs> Six months. Six months. I know these motherfuckers. You don't know? What's your name, bro? Well, I got to know them. I'm Dan? getting to know them now. Hey, uh, Mike, this is Dan. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Dan. This is Mike. <laughs> but I'm getting to know them. Now, this is Dan. See, now, after six months, I know this is Dan. Gabriel, I, I find your life fascinating, man. I think because I grew up as a single parent kid too, man. And I think the success you're that the you oldest, had. Huh? Uh, no, the I'm the last one. The I'm the last one. He's uh, the youngest, I'm the so youngest, he's, last, so he's one last of six, six, Mike. And there's about thirteen, roughly, years between my sister and myself. Yeah. So it's like I grew up an only child. You know, oh, she was yeah. up and out of the house by the time I was old enough to want a room. How was your upbringing bringing up, like growing up with from? that big family? Uh, you know. Uh, it, was, it was pretty awesome in. because I was the only one in the house. So I had all the attention from my and mom. what neighborhood? What neighborhood? What part of town? Uh, not too far from here, actually, yeah. uh, in the city of Long Beach. I was born in San Diego, grew up in Long Beach, and, you know, I still live there. Long Beach is cool. Yeah, it was a quick drive over here. I was like, oh, my God. And you have, like, a Farmer Boys right up. I don't know if you know that. They got Farmer Boys up the street. Yeah, some other. <laughs> yeah. I thought they only had those in the Inland Empire. That's why. <laughs> What's that, dispensary? <laughs> No, no, no. Farmer Boys is like a, a oh God, it's like a, you know what, a Cracker Barrel or Famous Dave's yeah. or kind of a, you know, more like a breakfast, real hearty breakfasty place. And I always see the commercials on TV and you always hear Farmer Boys. And I'm like, oh, you know, and I'm like, oh God, that's far. That's at least an hour drive. Yeah. And I'm like, that's it. No, I got Jack in the Box across the street. <laughs> so when you start this stand up <laughs> shit, when that started in your life? Uh, I started it. Whew, yeah, uh, yeah. What, what, what inspired you? Who did to be you a see? Comic? Oh man, you know I'm I'm gonna be 45, so I mean my my comedy you know heroes were Robin Williams, mm. Paul Rodriguez, uh, Eddie Murphy. You know uh, Eddie Murphy Raw was a comedy special I saw, and I said, ooh, you know, and not really the uh, <clears throat> the comic you would think would inspire a, a comic that works relatively clean, you know. But Eddie Murphy, it was he was a rock star. He walked out on stage, he commanded the crowd, he did impressions, he told stories, and j it was just it was awesome. And I said, I want that. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I want that. Same thing. I saw Sugar Ray Leonard and Fred Roberto Ren. I said, I want to be that. Same thing, exact thing. Yeah. You see, I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I said, I want to be that. Yeah, so it almost starts with inspiration, right? Like it, it starts with the imagination that you create in your mind. Yeah. And somehow you don't know the you don't and know. Once the you steps. see it, it's created in your mind. Once you see this is what you want, it starts taking on a life of its own, right? And how old were you at this time? Uh, well, I was 10 years old when I saw the, the comedy special, and I was just like, yeah. So By the time I finally did it, uh, you know, I did a, a talent show, and I did impressions 
on stage. Yeah. You know, I didn't know I was doing comedy. I just mm -hmm. knew that I was doing these little, you know, 10 year old kid doing impressions of, of the president of, you know, Mickey Mouse and all these other little characters. And uh, so to do that and then, you know, that was the spark when I actually heard the reaction from the crowd as a 10 year old. I says that this is going to happen. And so uh, I joined the speech team when I was in high school. And then, you know, a couple years out of high school, I got up on stage one night and I've been doing it ever since. It had to be a hit, you know, and you, you wouldn't have kept doing it. You know, normally your first time, you normally you get some success, and then that's when you just can't. You get the bug. And you can't stop thinking about it. That's why, I, you know, I encourage people all the time. Hey, if you got something that you're really passionate about, freaking do it. And all you, you know, don't look for other people's approval. Do it because you want to do it. Exactly. I did a bunch of movies before, but once I got on stage, that was a totally different animal. You yeah. want that feeling all the time. Can't live without it. It's that drug on my. Yeah. Knowing you're able to connect with so many people yeah, at once, right? it's just like ooh. You know how to control. You know when you can make them laugh. You know you can make them sad. Right yeah. now, you know you just you just can play them. It's just, I I can't explain it. Right? It's weird. It's strange. Yeah, cause it's uh, it's uh, it's man. There's there's so many aspects, man, to just just life and the journeys. That the, how they how they're almost very like similar to each other, just in different sports. It's like Mike, like you and him, you guys can relate a lot. Well, you know, listen, most athletes and um, entertainers, they mostly live in the same neighborhood. They got the same habit. They probably know each other before they got famous, and that's basically they have the same kind of habit: late nights and stuff, a lot of women, drinking, drugs, whatever. They got the same lifestyle, so. Normally they do associate with each other. Who who are your some of some of your all time great uh, uh, stand up comedians, man? Uh, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> I, I, I probably <laughs> he let's get us some water because I imagine. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if they're gonna show the footage of before I actually got into hot boxing because I was ner I'm not gonna lie, Mike. I was nervous. I'm like, you know what? Uh, the last time I, I you know did anything uh, smoking wise on in public it was that that were that people knew about was with Snoop and it's like okay you do a show with Snoop of course you know if it happens it happens nobody's going to judge on that one hey you know and kind of the same rule applies here today where i was like well uh all right <laughs> I, I get you know Mike Mike <laughs> casually hey here, here take this and I'm like and I apologize if if you you don't appreciate uh, people doing impressions no, of you because yeah no 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 I love, no, I no, love no. The head no 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 no, no. I, I don't, that slipped by the way I wouldn't have done that uh, the inner voice became the outer voice because apparently what you have to offer is incredible I, I was I was back there and I'm like okay I guess we're doing this and. And next thing I know, I'm halfway through one of those bats, <laughs> right? And I'm Face looking at it, I'm like, back. yeah, okay, this is going to be go in a different direction. What if I feel like we're not just going to talk about, have you tell ever, us about have your you, heroes. No, no, it's going to be like, you know. Gabe, yeah. have you ever done shrooms before, mushrooms? No, and today, oh, I, please don't man. do that to me. Oh, don't, don't, please don't do that to me. Uh, oh, hey, you hey, feel so hey, light on what hey, you're like. Wow. Freaking Super Mario, here you go. <laughs> Take the, no, no, I've, no, no shrooms, no shrooms. I love shrooms. Mm. Yeah, for, me. but yeah, I, I feel very relaxed, but at the same time alert, mm -hmm. too alert. So I'm just, you know. That's what right. Sativa does. It so that's why we, work. you heard the, oh, that's what that was? Sativa, okay, yeah. See, I don't, yeah no, uh. and My mom would have called relax. it El Chronic. Es El Chronic, mijo. Yeah, El Chronic. The Chronic. El Chronic. <laughs> but yeah, that's what was the, uh, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. Oh. Iglesias. Man, I, I imagine as a kid too. Were you always fluffy, even as a kid? I've always been a big kid. Yeah, uh, you know that was one of those things. I was always the kid of the husky pants, or yeah. uh, you know they got a, they kind of uh, yeah. you know here here uh, you know just uh, they try to put you on a slim fast diet or yeah. here drink a that shake, Nico, just work. have a shake. Yeah, you know, I've always I've always been big. I've always, it's always you know weight's always been an yeah, issue for me I, since I was little. I imagine though, like having like you you have to have a good sense of humor. Like, you know what I mean? Being, you know, I want to be a comic, it's like me. Like, you know, I'm short, dude. Like, <laughs> I do short jokes, you know what I'm saying? So it's almost like as a kid that you did you always have a, that sense of humor? Uh, No, man. I Actually, I think I spent a lot of the time being upset by the jokes and stuff like that. It, it was kind of like it turned into a defense mechanism. Uh -huh. Since I couldn't really physically do anything about it, let me try to find a way to change the situation and take away their power by making fun or cracking jokes and being yeah. okay with it. Yeah. Like, whatever, you don't care what you call me. You can't, you can't upset me. So you start learning how to ha find your own ways of just, 
you know, dealing with that. And yeah. humor seemed like the best way. Yeah, so exactly. it's like, you know, some people say, oh, poor guy, he's a big guy. But, you know, it, it was because of that that something happened that wound up inspiring me and motivating me to want to do what I do. Yeah, because now you, now you make money. I mean, obviously, the, the character, the name, the stand-up, it's, uh, you know, it all revolved around something that you probably didn't accept that you know being no, a kid, you know what i'm no. saying at the shows i would you know i'd come out of there and people would come up to me and they'd go hey great job fluffy and i'm like wait 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 i did one joke where i said the word i figured my first name's already you know i'm sorry the last name's already <laughs> famous name it's been around for 40 yeah. plus years i just got to work on the gabriel and people would you know gravitate to the fluffy thing yeah. above everything and so i hated being called fluffy but i only had about 10 minutes of material and that was like a large chunk of the material so when you're a <laughs> new comic you don't want to give up your jokes easy <laughs> eventually i learned to uh, not only accept it but you know uh, uh, take it to a place where uh, they give i you just I, I, yes uh, i own the word i basically own the word if you put fluffy on, on any search engine yeah. i am the number one search for that word Love because it. i i embraced it so many years ago yeah. and learned to brand it Really? Or would you brand into like, uh, and I don't know if I don't know if you are already. Like, are you into like to the food business? Uh, you know what? It, it's tricky. Uh, I had thought about opening up a restaurant two years ago. No, and it's a good no, thing I no. pulled Do the plug on that. Frozen meats. Well, I'm, uh, you know, uh, any kind of restaurant, whether you or you just say sell the meats. No, frozen meats. Oh, frozen meats. You could sell the many restaurants, not just one. Okay. Uh, there you go. There you have it. Uh, this I was thinking more like bread. You know how the bread fluffs up and it gets, you know, it's fluffy. Oh, like, <laughs> like I mean, a, bakery, a bakery, like things like that. Like I had thought about dude, a bakery. that name. That name is money, bro. Yeah, I, that I, name is money. I could go. You know, there's a few different fluffies. Things can, that, yeah. that, that, that's, I'm definitely going to fluffies for some sweet shit. There you go. <laughs> fluffies. <laughs> No, really? I'm serious. Yeah. That yeah, yeah, just sounded cool, didn't it? Yeah, I had to do that. Do that. <laughs> that was a commercial right there, dude. <laughs> Fucking fluffy. It's something sweet, yeah. From the hangover. So, whether, from, uh, the, yeah. from the high, we got to go to fluffy. <laughs> so uh, either a, uh, a a bakery or like a, a what do call it, like a fluff and fold, you know, where they do the laundry and stuff because it's the word fluffs in it. Fluff and feed, all that type of shit. I like I it. Like I like that. it. So the, the the transition from going to a com, from a, a stand up to uh, you know into Hollywood man how has right. when, when did that transition start did you always picture yourself like doing voiceovers and uh, and acting and things of that nature um, I think in the beginning it was one of those you're pre programmed as a as a comic you're pre programmed for certain goals. For example, every comic back in the day always wanted to have the Tonight Show episode. They wanted to have the HBO special. Not a Netflix special because there was no Netflix, not mm -hmm. Showtime or anything. They wanted the HBO special and then they wanted the sitcom. Once they got to the sitcom level, then they could build a fan base from that, that everybody, you know, so when they go on the road, they could sell tickets. That was always the pre-programmed goal. You got to do this, do this, do this, do this. And then once you're done with TV, then you could try to make that transition to film. So everything was looked at as a stepping stone with stand-up being the first step. Yeah. Um, so, like with with me, uh, chronologically you know, in place. I love being on stage. That was my number one love. Uh, my manager. I took on a manager because you gotta they love more work. It. You gotta love it. You gotta love it so much that they gotta pull you off. Yeah. You know. But you okay, all right, like all right. That. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this question, Mike. But you know, there comes a time like even you as an athlete when you're boxing. Well, you do this, you've been doing, you know, that's for so long that it's almost like you start to hate it or you, you love it so much that you hate it. You know what I'm saying? Do you listen, lose, do you lose love out of something listen, in comedy right? and boxing? Boxing, I understand it comes a certain time that you can't do it at the level that you really want to do it. And that's the top level. This acting game is immortal. It keeps you living forever. Imagine, you know, you know what it's like to have a week on Broadway or something like that, or a big theater or something. You can't imagine anything better if you're one of those guys that like attention and like seeing yourself on television and, you know, and I don't, and I'd be saying, wow, I don't even like guys like that, but that's the kind of guy I am. Um, you'd be surprised when I say somebody put a camera in my face, you know, you'd be surprised. It's just a drug. I'm I'm fucked up. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I grew up in the '90s. I know what yeah. you said on camera. Yeah. 
I, you, put a camera you know what I've always face. wanted to know? When you, you put a camera in my face and I would say anything. It has no shame. I don't know why I'm like that. I hate being that. That's the part of me. Oh, my God. Like. You put a camera in my face, I just turn to somebody I don't even know. I always used to wonder, like, what is he? What he, that's what he's saying on camera. I wonder what he says to the fighters in the uh, ring. Oh, when you're when you're hitting these guys, you know, I'm sure you're not just quiet, like oh, stand still, you know, pow crazy. pow. No, oh, you're, you got to be talking smack. Oh back. god, yes, I'm a pig. Did you ever tell anybody, you know, like I, as soon as I beat you, I'm gonna go to Sizzler or something, something nah, just kind of <laughs> just basic, stuff. you know? It's really nasty <laughs> stuff. It's stupid shit. <laughs> I'm a nut. Oh God, please forgive me. I imagine how I imagine how fun it is, uh, cause you know uh, my cast is cartoon, but I imagine how fun it's been to do all these like uh, sequels of the Ice Age, uh, Scooby Doo, Space Jam. You're gonna be part of this new movie with uh, with LeBron James and, and Space Jam. Uh. Yeah, no, I'm very excited to do the. You imagine the, that? Yeah, this will be forever. It is gonna be and forever. Like, they gonna never forget you. I'm the first one, Bugs Bunny. Mm hmm. And more. Yeah. See, you remember with me. Jordan. And they're gonna remember it with Fluffy. Yeah. Mm hmm So Fluffy gets to play Speedy Gonzalez in this one. Oh damn. It's about time the Mexican plays hey, a Mexican. Speedy <laughs> Gonzalez. And this is Slowpoke Rodriguez, but Slowpoke Rodriguez got a big gun and he shoots the cat. <laughs> damn. <laughs> <laughs> Little Paul Rodriguez. <laughs> yeah, you know Paul Rodriguez. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you good friends with Paul Rodriguez? I know who Paul Rodriguez is, yeah. but I said Slowpoke. Oh, Slowpoke is uh, Speedy Gonzalez's like yeah. cousin or yeah, brother. Yeah, Slowpoke. So he's but a he had the big opposite. gun though. He had the gun. He's that's why he's slow. He don't have to run because he got a fucking big. Yeah. No. <laughs> Slowpoke is like the cat that. tried to give me his blues brain a bow. <laughs> Slowpoke's like that uh, that ghetto cousin we all have. Yeah, kind of you know. Like, you only invite them when you can watch them at all times. Yeah. You know? Are they gonna have him in the movie too, Slowpoke? No, no, there's no Slowpoke in the movie. I think that was the character that people That's were kind of thinking yeah. that Speedy Gonzalez was. Yeah. And why oh, they try to cancel him? No. Slowpoke is beautiful. Mm. How's yeah. it? How's it been? How's it been with COVID? How, how's it? Have you been doing? Uh, how's it been, man? I imagine. Did you guys go online too, like uh, like the rest of the world? With stand up and things like that. Uh, as soon as COVID hit, I I knew this wasn't going to be a two week thing. I, I I just already knew in my gut. No, there's no way this is two weeks. I'd say the first month I was super you know bummed out and depressed that I you know I'm on stage in front of people every single night and all of a sudden I'm in my room and I'm it's you know. Do you live alone? Yeah, oh, I live alone. So it's me and my listen, dogs and it's just like listen, yeah, I, we're not going anywhere today either. You know what? <laughs> I practice on my wife. You know, I make up some story and tell my wife some shit. And I think it's me and her fighting, but I'm not really mad. But I made this fight look, but like I'm going to do this play. You, you, you're fucking around on me. You know? Just fucking my wife. You're driving her nuts. I'm just a nut. It's like to drive my wife nuts. Yeah. So I'm really just practicing. Yeah. Just having fun. Yeah, driving my wife nuts. That's it's just me or do you guys hear someone cleaning? Right next door here. Oh, okay. I'm like, wow, that's really the good. Car I'm like, why do I hear, I hear, what are they doing over there? It's probably it's probably it's cleaning. probably it's probably one of our cousins that right oh, back. Oh dude, there. man. Yeah, I hear the <laughs> sh -sh -sh -sh. I know this, like and if I smell fabuloso, I'm gonna lose my shit. Uh, like I don't know what you put in that mic, but yeah, it keeps telling that. You uh, start hearing things. But when when COVID hit, man, I, I basically uh, I had to find other things that I was good at. You know, I had to work on other skills in mm -hmm. order to, you know, pass the time. You can't spend time in front of people. So I started, you know, messing around making, uh, I created a TikTok. You know, I started playing videos, just trying to stay creative in some way. You know, uh, working on some potential scripts. I did the voiceover for uh, Space Jam. So that was one of the things uh, that, that, That's you know, a big that I was one working though, on. Huh? So yeah, it's a huge honor. Huge honor. The big one. You know, Warner Brothers took a chance. Uh, I defended the character when they tried to cancel it. And so there's nothing wrong with Speedy Gonzalez. Mexican people love Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah. You know, he's like one of our heroes. I was like, you can't just, what, his crime is he's fast? Yeah. You know, he talks fast. <laughs> you know. Ay, señor. I can't believe it. You know. Ando aquí con el señor Tyson. <laughs> Be careful, Mike Tyson. I am yeah. the fastest mouse in all Mexico. <laughs> Uh, what was the cat named Sucker Puss or what's up? Sucker Puss? The cat, the cat that's always trying to get him. 
Look out, Chin. <laughs> sucker puss. Uh, that'll sucker be a, a, yeah, that should be a fighter man. in the next Tyson's punch out. Just man, sucker puss. Oh, we face. Sucker that, shit, that shit sounds evil, Mike. Sucker puss. <laughs> I think he created a new stripper name. Yeah, man. <laughs> Sucker puss. But when you think about it, listen, right? Cartoons, when I used to watch it, they're not for fucking kids. I didn't understand that cartoon. It was too complex. Bugs Bunny, the Woodpecker, and Speedy Gonzalez. When I got older, I understood. What's your What's your favorite piece up to this uh, up to this date? Yeah, but you you've done some pretty cool, you know, stuff in your in your career, man. What do you think is like your your top Gabby piece, piece yeah. man? That you that you can honestly say, like, hey, man, this is this is my best display. Personal, that must mean your personal best. Like you feel in your heart, you say, this is my best. Um, you know, it's I think that whatever you've done for me, anyways, is the, the last thing that I did because it's just like the progress, the growth. Uh -huh. You know, like the each, each one of the specials, each thing that I did was uh, something that helped grow into that next spot. So, I mean, it's like, you know, uh, every time you do something, you got to make it a little bit better than the last time. Otherwise, you know, you become, you know, somebody's going to pass you up. Yeah. So, so it's almost like you have to constantly be competing because you're right. It's like that in the game. You know what I'm saying? There's there's a, there's a champion after another champion. After, that's why nobody's greater than the sport of boxing, that's why there's nobody greater than the, than the, you know, than the event of stand-up. You know what I'm saying? Because people will always trickle in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The greatest of all time is always, you know, the one that's straight behind you by a little bit. And if you don't move, you're going to get ran over. And right, the greatest, Mike? The greatest of all time, never forget this, can handle disappointments. Uh -huh. He never gets discouraged, no matter what. This is also this is all about being cha being challenged by the by the universe. How bad you really want it, how much you really believe in it. How do you answer to that? I don't know, man. I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is a good one. I, I can see me trying to formulate something. That's no, deep. No, but you know, you feel special. You know, I don't mean you just know you you're destined for something. Not like you feel better than anybody else. You just know that you're destined for something, don't you? Don't you feel that way? I think that I was definitely put here to put smiles on faces. Absolutely. I think that was that was my gift, and that's and, what and I want to do. There's no accidents. No. No, you know, God don't make mistakes. We all here for for whatever for we a do. Yeah. 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 That's why I try to keep the shows as friendly as I can, which is why I think your ten year old son could watch the show. Mm -hmm. You know, he loves it's, it's, it. He you loves know, there's it. so many different things that I've I've worked on, but I always try to keep a certain you know, yeah. like I don't like. Uh, Talking about religion in my show, I don't like talking about sports in my shows. I don't like talking about you know uh, politics because they're divisive. They cause they're, they're people to privilege. yeah. So it's I rather keep the shows friendly. Talk about friends, family, fun, hangouts. I'm gonna talk about this at some point in my life. <laughs> Mike got me too high for the my, interview. Mike, Mike got me high. I started talking about the universe. The couch opened up, man. I there was a fr when did where did the frog come from? See, I just now noticed the frog. I'm like, holy shit! He's it's the toad. It's we happening. Smoke him. We gotta smoke that guy. He smokes with us. The toad. Yeah, that's the toad. Man. That's a psychedelic man. I love the psychedelics. Does that does that frog have a name, Mike? I feel like that frog lives on this set. No, nah, that's Hermit. That's Hermit. Okay. Yeah. So you have a your, your, no, Kermit. Your, K Kermit. 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 Yeah, okay. Kermit. Kermit. I like Kermit better. You're gonna than do your next special coming up, or is it is it coming up? It's gonna be coming up on Netflix uh, here pretty soon. Yeah. How did you feel when you heard you had a you know a gig? They wanted you to do a Netflix gig. Oh, you know what? Anytime you know you got some work coming up, you're always excited. You're looking yeah. forward to it. it. When they call it a special, it definitely is a special. You feel there's there's more to that specific thing you're doing than any other night when you're doing your shows. Is, you know, is Henry, that special? Henry, I could um, I could be in the audience and I could I could um, entertain one person and I could ent entertain ten thousand. If one person's looking at me, I entertain them. Yeah, it's a bug. It's just I don't know why I'm like that. So is it Kermit or Hermit? Kermit. Okay. Just I'm high. So <laughs> I am, Hermit. man. <laughs> Hi, Hermit. I'm a little too late. <laughs> Everything's gonna start talking right now. Kermit, yeah. Yeah, man. I, I'm uh, uh, the last comic standing, dude. Talk about a little bit about that. Oh man, that was a long time ago. Yeah, I got kicked off the show uh, for having a BlackBerry. That's how long ago it was. A BlackBerry. Yeah. Remember the BlackBerry phone? Why, yeah. why you weren't supposed to have that? Uh, when you're on the last comic standing, you know you're competing against each other, and yes. they're afraid that if you have a cell phone, that Somebody they're gonna they're gonna stuff. send you 
they're going to send you outside Joke. jokes to help you get to the next round. And, you know, I'm like, oh, so you got kicked out for, you know, I mean, quasi cheating, huh? Well, I wasn't <laughs> cheating. I was just, I had a new girlfriend at the time. And, you know, you're going to put me in a hotel for a week. And I just hooked up with this new girl. And I'm like, no. So I, yeah. I wanted to keep tabs. So I snuck in my phone so I could stay in touch with her. You're yeah. a bad kid, man. Well, I wasn't a bad kid. <laughs> I just, bad I, you know, kid. I didn't do anything. I just you took, see, I took my cell phone. Some. He needs I took some my love cell love phone on, on the show with me. And that's, that's, that, was my, that was my the crime. Fluffster. The fluffster. He's, he needs some loving with, you know, for that fluff. You know, but hey, it, 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 it worked out. <laughs> it, it all works out. Though. Yeah, it's sick, man. Yeah. You know, I get kicked off the show. Yeah. And because I got kicked off the show. You, you know, I didn't, I didn't go down the route of whatever they wanted me to do. I, I broke off and I was able to do my own thing. So it's almost like because you became a rebel, it was it was able to spark up your, uh, you know, your career. I mean, it's been a while. I don't. Did you watch the last? Uh, was it like that? Imagine, you know, sometimes when some when something dramatic happens on a on a TV show, mm -hmm. it's like and the person breaks off, and if they're able to make it, you know, it's because they're you know you're somewhat known as a rebel. You know what I'm saying? I think everybody not saying, has... that, not saying that you're a rebel, but no, you know what I'm saying? The situation. Comes because of the nice guy, though, always. They had a nice guy reputation. But but rebel rebel. I think everybody has to have a, a rebel in them in order to to advance, to get better, to grow. As as a, you know, whether it's a, in your career or in your life, you always have to do something a little bit different, a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit outside the box in order to get to where you want to be. Uh -huh. You know, so everybody has to. Ah, yeah, oh, man, just you know, sometimes you got to take control of your own. If you want to get there, otherwise you're just going to continue to do the same, the same thing day after day. So, do you think being kicked off from that show, you think that led more to your uh, to your destiny? Yes, because then I had to fight to prove that it wasn't a mistake. I needed to show, like, uh, to myself more than anyone, yeah. that man, this is just a, a, a you know, a, a drop in the bucket of disappointments along the way. There's going to be many more coming. I just got to get through this one and get on to the next thing. You know, so it just it, it made me want to go out and just work more, do more shows, get more, get in front of as many people as possible. What was your ba uh, breakthrough, Mike? What do you think it was for you? Or something that just like, you know, that I triggered. I don't know what fighting. Yeah, from the amateurs, from when you first started in the amateurs, and then, um, and then going to a professional, because there's a switch. Best Mike. thing that ever happened to me. I lost my first amateur fight when I was around 16 years old. Uh -huh. I fought a guy 25. And um, 25 years old, yeah, but that, they had you an open right away, yeah. And I was, um, it's ridiculous, man. It was a close fight, but I fought real hard. The guy was smart, he was a little bit more experienced than I was. But that loss helped me learn a lot, yeah. I'm so happy I had that. I wouldn't have never learned, so that but was your very uh, first, else, uh, else I would have learned later in life. So yeah, that's my first loss in amateur ever. Your first time yes. ever competing, damn, yeah. I did not know that. It was in Boston. He was a local boy, and it was packed around, I don't know what, 15, 20,000 people. We were fighting. Amateurs. And then it was New York against Massachusetts. Fear. It was packed. Do you still remember that to this day? Never forget it. 40. Yeah. Yeah, never forget it. Yeah, 40 years later, you're still, uh, still kind of, yeah, that's awesome, man. You never forget your fights. Yeah. The disappointments. Yeah, never that, forget that, that, that made you, you know. You always have to be careful. Listen, just like in being an entertainer, whatever you do best in life to entertain, the well, your job, you got to be careful how you live your life. I mean, live your workplace. Like my fight, you always have to be careful how you fight your fight because the way you fight your fight be the way you live your life. And we all live our life by the way we do our job. Oh. And we got extreme jobs. Even comedian, that's an extreme job. Mm -hmm. Really extreme. Mm -hmm brain constantly working. That's not really fucking normal. Brain have to rest. And then anytime you're out in public, people coming up to you and you gotta always wonder, how are they gonna approach you? Are they gonna be nice? Are they gonna be rude? Be are asshole. they gonna be loud? Yeah, you know, and so you gotta prepare yourself. And sometimes it's not just one person, sometimes it's a group and Sometimes of we take people wrong, they like you, but they're not warm. Exactly. You know what I mean? And, and they and feel entitled yeah. to your attention. Oh, as my wife always says. My wife always says, they feel like they own you in New York. You know? But that is true. People, especially of your race, they feel like they own you if they come from your neighborhood or something. That's just how it is, you know? You always owe something to someone. You're yeah. always walking around like that. Like, yeah. Because oh. in reality, we do. Everybody owes everybody. Everybody owes God to give us breath. We owe each other to learn from one another. You know what I mean? Even our enemies could teach us about ourselves. 
It's one big school. The world is just one big school, and we're students. You have kids, Gabriel. You have a uh, you have a family, wife. Uh, no wife. I have a son. Mm-hmm. Uh, his name's wow. Well, people already know his name. I promise I might stop talking about him on TV. <laughs> this isn't technically TV though, right? Frankie. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Frankie <laughs> and big time television. Frankie. Millions and millions Mike, Mike Tyson just said your name. Now. Frankie Glacius. Uh, he kept his original <laughs> uh, factory settings. <laughs> what was, which one was that? I can't say his last name. Oh, Frankie, you're so yeah. lucky. Yeah, so you, you choose They know who you are, Frankie they know Glacius. Who you are. They know who that is. You can't hide that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, do you wish to keep that private because of kind of what you, what you, you know, obviously being famous? Well, you know, uh, I think we signed up for the attention and the spotlight. Our families I, I don't, gonna, didn't always do that. I was going to say good luck. Yeah, uh, it's family, friends, and stuff like that. They they didn't sign up for that. They want to just be with the you know the person, not the 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 thing that everybody sees. And so <laughs> yeah, the you know persona, they they yeah. don't want to deal with that. Sometimes they're good about it, <laughs> well, but sometimes yeah, they don't want to deal with it. Right. Sometimes your kids be looking at you like you want this, Dad. This is what you want. And one of my sons look at me. You know, he's like, I want to walk with my kids, and we're by the um. The base and people started coming in, and I think you know, I think my kids walking away from they me. They feel nervous. Yeah, they, feel they like walk away from me. They're on the outskirts of everything. I'm like, hey, where are you going? I'm, I'm by myself with the crowd. Oh, they man. don't want to be a part yeah. of none of that. They love you, but they don't. Yeah, they don't they, love no, the attention that that. They don't want to be a part know, of none friends. of that stuff. So that's why, yeah, I try to keep it private. They don't want their business out there. I mean, damn. You know. Yeah, people people forget about that, Mike. You know, I I think of you. We get selfish sometimes, and we want to think it's all about us. But next thing you know, it's pushing your children away from you. <laughs> oh God! My children just started thinking I'm cool again. You know? Oh yeah. They just got back, and you know what I mean, in their good graces. Magic Mike, too. Are you? Are you? Are you? Oh, uh, I was like, what? Are you? Uh... <laughs> That was an uncomfortable segue. <laughs> no, nah, that was good. I'm good with my Mike's over here. Like I'm good with my kids, and then Magic Mike. Whoa! <laughs> well, maybe I could have maybe back. I could have delivered we that missed, a little bit we better. Missed the but, uh, we missed Magic the Mike was a strip club guy, right? Yeah, that was a stripper movie. Yeah, and, and I was in that. Tell me about that. One. I wasn't that. I, I didn't get you naked, dance, Mike. You I didn't get naked, Mike. You danced, None of this bro. came off. It all stayed on. Too. I was I was the only actor on the set of Magic Mike who was allowed to go to craft yeah. services. Tell me about did you dance yeah. though? Those guys couldn't eat, man. Did they, they have, have you dancing though? I I I did the car dance. I be, I did this one. You know when you're oh, just in the car. Did they give you money? Side side. I, they gave me a lot of money. I was very happy. The movie oh, was a hit. Good. It had a sequel, and so I got I got to be in two movies. Awesome. Oh, dude, that's cool, man. I imagine, man. That, that should, I remember that movie was a hit, man. Every, every girl you know, talking about it. What's funny, though, is when people recognize me from that movie, and then they tell their friends, and they're like, he was in Magic Mike, and then they look at me like, what happened? You know, was it CGI? <laughs> How did, like, no, I wasn't, no, I was in it, but I wasn't in, you know, I, would, I didn't, but yeah, it was good times. Yeah, man. So, speaking about celebrity boxing, Mike, what'd you uh, what'd you think of uh, of man? I want to talk to you about that? I don't know. I, I think Floyd did good, but he needs to. Um, the guy was big. You know, even though he was hurting the guy, the guy was big. And normally, if a guy was his weight, he wouldn't really hit Floyd that hard. Floyd would take the shot. But that guy hitting Floyd, that's like a small heavyweight, 190 pounds, and Floyd's like 150 something. Yeah. That's a 30 pound difference. That has a lot to do with it. I didn't know that the the weight was such a difference. Well, do you do you think that uh do you think that that helped boxing? Obviously, Flo would beat him by points. But, but, but it's who, almost like because he didn't he didn't he didn't put it on him or didn't hurt him. Yeah. It's what well, uh listen he he did he maybe um he came out of shit maybe he didn't prepare properly maybe he didn't spar with a heavyweight because that's yeah. what that guy was a small heavyweight yeah. Yeah, at no point though did I ever feel like it was uh, going bad for Floyd. Yeah. I just felt like you know he just wants to carry it. No, I don't think he carried it. But it's good. No, the guy who made carried. him complicated. The guy was awkward and stuff, and yeah. he didn't fight in a few yeah, years. He was using his length, and then he yeah. was clinching. Yeah, he was clinching and was pissing and, Floyd off. Yeah, and then dude, who know, dude, you don't have that type of stamina. Like people, people don't recognize that boxing pressure, boxing pressure from the pure sport of boxing. You guys' pressure is scary and it's different. You know what I'm saying? But if somebody just pressure, anyways, what I'm saying is Jake Paul was able to withstand at least eight rounds. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That shit's hard, Mike. Oh, no doubt about it. Listen, 
That's why I, I can never say nothing negative about Floyd because that shit is not easy. You know that. <laughs> yeah. You know, this fight and shit, yeah. man, your, your mind going there, you got it all together and shit, you start going wrong, man. It's um, it's a hard business. It's more so psychological. Mm -hmm. People think it's physical, so psychological. Do you think do you think that's still how boxing? Boxing's gonna do what it's gonna do. You know, I don't think it hurt boxing. You know, people have to look and say Floyd is forty four. This is a young guy. He's thirty pounds heavier. He's younger. Yeah. You could you could um you could expect um a difficult fight. Mm -hmm. You know, I I thought I just believe Floyd would have had um because he's very intelligent. I thought that he would arrange this different, at least ten pounds different. You know, instead of thirty. You know what the fuck? Or maybe the fight, the brother's lighter, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The, Jake maybe Paul. fight the brother. Yeah, Jake Paul's gonna be fighting. Do you, do you keep up with uh, mixed martial arts, Gabriel? Uh, or boxing I, or anything? I, definitely boxing. Uh, are you are you gonna referee that fight for uh, Chavez uh, Senior? Oh, that is so yeah. awesome, right? I would definitely do that. How'd you, how'd you hear about that? that? Oh, you know. Cause cause yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Because I follow <laughs> boxing a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I, and every chance like, I get for any any major the, fight, we always get together. I always see what's yeah. the latest fight. So, all right, now. Is, I think it's the Rand James going to fight Chavez. Who was it? Who was it? Was it, uh, is it Cam I think Camacho. Camacho? It Camacho? No. It's either Camacho or not yeah, Durant. He's, no, he's going to fight Hector Camacho Jr. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah he's man, that's going to be so fucking crazy, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. Have, you, have you refereed a fight before? Um, In UFC. A UFC, for, not a UFC, but MMA fight in Britain. In prison? In Great Britain. Oh, in Great Britain. Did, didn't you ref a fight at WrestleMania? Yeah. The house, oh. I had to have fun with that. I love wrestling. Uh, yeah. You know. I, I love wrestling. Also, oh, you're a big, uh, you're, you're a big, uh. WWE fan, old school WWE when it was WWF, yeah. you know, and then now it's you know they got they got a couple companies. Yeah, out they got there some competition now. Who's who's who? Who are some of your your greats, man, in the WWE? Oh man, uh, you know, original was of course Hulk Hogan for me. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, love yeah. Stone Cold. I remember yeah, I have fought him before. Yeah, Stone Cold. Yeah. Yeah, you have. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you went up against Stone Cold, huh? Yeah, that's right. I see you My had favorite a... was Bruno Sammartino. He's though he's like in the seventies and the early eighties. He used to work out with uh, Schwarzenegger. Yeah. They would work out together. Who? Bruno Bruno San Martino and Arnold Schwarzenegger would yeah. work out. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'd always see those old school black and whites. Oh, San Martino was the man. Yeah, I tried it once on a on a count, you know, for a shoot, and the one me falling off the ring just to get on the floor hurt, and I'm like, there's no way I could handle being a professional wrestler. Yeah, the, the, the bumps, you, you the physical. Remember, you don't remember the wrestler New Jack from that? Yes. Oh, he saw him throw that guy. Yeah. Oh man, guy. you throw me you off a building. That's a crime. Have you yeah, seen he, that? Like, he's dead can, now. Can, but we, he did can some we pull time that up real that. quick? You gotta see this, man. Mike, some, Mike just showed us. Like he did really? some time yeah. for this. I think New Jack was insane. There's a <laughs> reason he died why, of an you know, OD or something. <laughs> something crazy. Look at this guy. Look at this shit. He is the most extreme wrestler I've ever seen. I've never intense. seen nothing like him. You see he cut his forehead and stuff? Look at his forehead. Did I never even... Oh, this is on That's Sandman right there. And Sandman's one of the most hardcore wrestlers ever. Yeah. Oh, so these dudes... Oh, these dudes are kamikazes almost, though. Yeah, definitely. New Jack actually stabbed a guy in the ring. Yeah. He, he, you know, in the face guy, somewhere? The guy did something. He did something like real uh, in the corner. Like I think he punched his nose or something. And then New Jack stabbed the guy in the ring. He had a taser. He tased him with an actual taser that oh, he took shit. into the ring. So he tased him. That's crazy. And then he, oh. Yeah, call the cops. God, Lee. <laughs> I love that New Jack was so unapologetic too. Oh, he said he it right there. I wanted him to hit the floor. It was like, whoa. Oh, the dude's the dude died. No, no, no. He didn't die from that. He but didn't. Yeah, I, was I, like, I really he died from something else. I was like, damn. Yo, dude. Oh, years later, that other uh, wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. You think you would have got, you know, gotten into wrestling if if you wouldn't have done? Oh, boxing? definitely wrestling. Yeah, I used to love wrestling. When I was a kid before I even thought of boxing. Bad. And you got Macho Man, or you got the whole the whole oh, Mania. Macho Man. I was, I was gonna do Stone Cold uh, talking to Tyson. Go for All it. Right, let's go. Let's Listen, see it. Man, it's about damn time you had me on your show. <laughs> You had to smoke at the fat Mexican to get the boys in here. At them, brother. I wish you could hear this shit. Hey, listen, I was wondering, um, you know, 
Ando marihuano. Bien marihuano. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tell me Speedy Gonzalez. I speedy. cannot believe I'm hanging out with Mike Tyson. This is beautiful. Ay, <laughs> I was trying to make him flinch. He don't flinch, people. He don't flinch. <laughs> Too high to flinch. Just too damn high to flinch. You know what I'm doing, me and Henry? Yeah. Yeah, a big fan of boxing, big fan of wrestling, MMA. I, I'm, every time, every time Dana White shows up on my in my feed because I follow Dana White, I'm just like, what's gonna happen today? You know, he, he's so just he out had there. The best job in the world. Bad. Promote, yeah, yeah, promoting the, the fights. Job, but yeah, he's always. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He's you know he's got, always got something to say. Yeah, no kidding. He wants to fight. No, Oscar wants to fight him. Yeah. Oscar De La Hoya? Oscar yeah. wants to fight Dana White. Oscar would put it on him, dude. You know, he's different. There's levels. Yeah, poor Oscar. Yeah, because they want to they wanna make Oscar De La Hoya versus uh, GSP. But Oscar De La Hoya would hurt GSP, too. Like, he Dana, Dana White didn't want to let it happen. Yeah, they so, box? Yeah, don't do that shit. <sighs> yeah, G, G, He's uh, a different uh, kind of fighter. If he could punch and shit. I think a punch. Yeah, and Oscar's a fighter, bro. Like yeah. he's gonna bring the fight like to you. Fight, he's, yeah. he's not Mayweather. He's gonna be all defensive. This yeah, is co- this dude's coming at you to kill you, dude. Yeah, he's gonna fuck you up. Even now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, Gabriel. What's what's next, man? What what does this uh, year twenty twenty one bring bring to you? Hopefully, a lot of work and uh, health, prosperity. Thank you, Mike. Uh, you know, <laughs> just mine, I'm, I'm just you. having an awesome time. Pleasure mine. We, are awesome time. we are uh, too. Can I fangirl for just a second? Go for it. Just I, 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 man, I brought pictures. I just want to make sure you sign my picture so I can put you on my I wall. I got you, nigga. man. I go, well, you're wearing a D Generation X shirt. Oh, uh, back in the day. Yeah, I was the wrestling nigga. Okay, yeah, that, sorry. Yeah, I went that's... to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, no, that's main well, Generation nice. X went to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, for sure, man. What are some of the greatest memories you have of uh, of, of Mike? Uh, you know what? Uh, growing up, you know, we'd always look forward to those. Uh, either it was either HBO or like a TV KO pay per view, and it was, it, you know, it was it was back and forth. It was Chavez watching a Chavez fight, yeah. watching the Tyson fight. So that we, we fought kind of, on the same the year, card yeah. a lot. Yeah. Oh man, and so you know. Yeah. Chavez, you know, we, we, learned that, we learned that we learned that as soon as your people. fight, as soon as Mike's fight starts, don't leave the couch. They always yeah. tell me, wait till the third round. And ran nine out of ten times, there was no third round. Yeah. You know, like, you would have missed it. Because one time I almost did miss the fight because I was getting up. And my, my brother-in-law pulls me back. He's like, hey, ¿dónde va? The Puerto Rican dude, love you, don't big uh, Camacho fan. But he pulls me back and he's like, watch. And I don't know. I forget who he was. I was probably, what, 13 at the time? Yeah. And all your, all your fights were just, you know, that was my childhood. Yeah. And that I, was my childhood. It was, you know, again. And I, I used to know Camacho when he was like, he was insane. He was beautiful, man. He talked a lot of shit. Yeah. I saw his uh his show on uh his documentary. His documentary right? on Showtime. Psh. Yeah, Camacho. It was that one fight that changed everything where he used to be a fighter and then he started kind of playing more defense because he had one fight that really uh you know kind of brought him back to reality. So he kind of started shying away from the person he used to be, and then he kind of started losing a little bit, got into drugs. Just that whole nine. But he had a lot of love for his mom. And just the way he was, um, you know, murdered, man, if, we, if you would say, in, in Puerto Rico. It's our culture. We grew up around people like that, you know. We, we could always get caught up into our past. Yeah. You know. This stuff is not easy. Tell them this stuff. But you know, this stuff is not easy. Yeah. Did they ever catch the person that did it? I want to say that they they had they said they had clues. They knew yeah, they who was, they clues, but they couldn't yeah. prosecute yeah. or something. They had clues. Fame. You know, Mike? No, but they had clues. The show said the same thing at the conclusion. Yeah, some clues. of the other fi- some of the other fighters like uh, Johnny Tapia was another oh. one. That's yeah. who I was. My era, we was in the amateurs together. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it was crazy on Mike. Did you ever party with him? We hung out. He was just a, you know. He was wild, but he was a good person. Yeah. You know, he was just one of those brothers that was abused as a kid. Had a chip on his shoulder. He was a little guy, but he was a tough, mean motherfucker. You know, he was fighting anybody. Who were who were some of the closest Mikes? Who were some of the closest uh boxing friends that won world titles that, that we, we probably know that you were closest to? Chavez, Trinidad, some oh, Trinidad, man. Felix Trinidad too. Yeah. He, was old. he used to be promoted with us. He was old. He was did, you, did you ever go out to Puerto Rico with him? Yeah. Yeah, how was that, dude? He was good. He's the king out there. Yeah. 
How did the, how did the Puerto Rican people receive you down there? They're good. I've been there a couple of times. Yeah. And um, I've been to Culiacan to visit Chavez. Yeah. You went to Culiacan? Yeah, that was pretty interesting. Wow. <laughs> That was pretty interesting. Dude, as far as I'm concerned, you're probably, you probably went to a party and kicked it with uh, El Chapo. Who knows, man? <laughs> oh, oh, man. Who knows? Yeah, that's... I met okay. some interesting people. Every time somebody goes to Culiacan in my family, I'm like, why? What's going on? <laughs> we're coming, we're coming back with good. a bunch of bags we're just of gonna candy. Go, we're gonna go, yeah, they, they sell really good masapanes over there. We're just going to go get some, some tacos and call it a day. Man, well, Gabriel, man, what what advice you got for him, uh, Mike? Man, he's uh. No, uh, listen, he he just he's a humble brother. He knows he's just stay on the same path, the determination, the drive, the will, to want to do this stuff. You know, what I mean? you have to want it more than anybody else want it. Yes, yes. I learned this, you know, somebody, this, I learned this in some old black and white movie, Western. They say, I want to be up more than anybody want me to be down. You have to look at life like that, and it happened that way. Whatever you say you are is what you are. If you think if you say you're a stupid fool, that's what you are. If you say I'm a great genius, that's what you are. Whatever you say about yourself or whatever you think is right. To each perspective, mm. up or down. Yeah, I've definitely said both to myself. You're the best, you're the worst. Yeah, greatest advice. You only you say that you only say you're the worst to be able to say you're the best. You to know? bounce back from it. Yeah, that's why you say I'm the worst. Then next thing you know I'm the best. Our mind plays tricks. Our mind is not our friend. You know, we have to have our mind in check. We have to control it. Because we don't control it, that tell us some crazy shit. I don't know why it's like that, no. Yeah, Gabriel, what, uh, what message, man, do you have for all your fans out there? Look, man, for all right the, there, there they all go. Which one, you got? Which one you got, man? Let me you... check on Dan. Dan, you good? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Dan's like, Fluffy had no idea what was going to happen to him today. <laughs> you look like you got some he had no idea. He thought he was going to come here and just talk about the mouse and the movie. No. You have a lot of it people got, watching you right deep. now. It got really deep. I'm still wondering how I'm going to get home. And if Farmer <laughs> Boys is still open. You have people to drive also, you? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could find that. Uh, as far as a message or uh, what was it? Yeah, just, was yeah just a message yeah, of inspiration. You man. You're an inspiration to a lot of people. Life. How do you feel your gratitude about being who you are? It's My it's an, son it's, loving you. People, kids loving you. Do you feel some responsibility to live up to for that? Yes, there definitely is a, a responsibility. That's why, you know, I'm hesitant to do something like, you know, uh, smoke weed, in, you know, in, in public uh, because people have a certain image uh, or a certain way that they see what I do. And because people, you know, have kids that want to come Please out, they're like, hey, people. you know, can you set somewhat of a good example? You know, and so it is uh, very challenging for me to put myself in certain situations as cool and as fun as it is. You know, I take a risk by doing that. I take a risk that people are going to be like, you know what? That's not what I signed up for. That's not what I thought. Look, what he's doing. How could he make decisions and choices like that? Uh -huh. And so that is hard because, you know, when you put yourself in a situation, uh, a, a certain box, people have those expectations. That's no, why you, if, I, you, if I all of a sudden start talking about politics, you people would, you know, I'd lose half. You know, so yeah. there's a certain image and a certain Love thing you. that. You belong on children, channel, child, church, um, TV choice. If you can't say it, I can't do it, Mike. You know that shit is, man. <laughs> the Choice Awards for kids and all that stuff. You need to be. You need to have the children crowd. You can never lose with the kids. You can never lose. You got that temperament too. They love you. My son loves you. Ten years old. All he do is sit down and watch YouTube and all that stuff. He loves you. Thank you. But to your point about responsibility, that's why it is hard sometimes because people have certain levels of what should be the responsibility. You know, as artists, I think people hold us to a different place where it's like, you know, we're people I, I would too. I look at you totally different if you was a, a, like a cursor or something like that. I would just look at you totally different. Not good or bad, I would just know, boom, this is who he is and stuff. Yeah. Just the fact that he does it, my kid just loves him. And my kids are great kids. So I know you have good energy out there. It's like you had to, you had to cater to the masses and the masses is the majority. The majority in this situation are kids. There's more kids than adults in this world, right? Yeah, this is this is a um, this is a PGG version of our interviews and stuff. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> right? I don't know. You guys were holding back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is PG, man. PG, you got to do some mushrooms, you know? Mike. And, then the... and, and, you know, it's like people forget, you know, I'm a regular person. I do cuss. I do have habits. I do, you know, uh, say random things from time to time that might not go over well on stage. So yeah, what exactly. you deliver... And you know, in public versus what you what, get what back you... though. But what you live is what you get back, and you gotta love. I love you, that's what my kids love you. you know what I mean, he wouldn't have come so bad there, but he had to go on the field trip today, so he couldn't be here. Couldn't be. Uh, well, that's what's up. Uh, any you want to close it out for us, man? Um, Closing thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> be careful with your life's choices. This is gonna be the sound bite they'll play like thirty years from now, or twenty years from now, or the day that I die. Look to go for her. Yeah. Trying to tell us about life choices. No, uh, <laughs> I think, Mike, what you said is, is true. What you put out is what you get back. Exactly. Uh, put out good energy, and good energy will come back to you. And if you're an ass, expect asshole things to happen to you. What, what if you want ass? Would you get, if you oh, want Oh, man, yeah. that's... <laughs> See, I think we go I'm, just gonna drink, why, I'm just going to drink my I water. Know, I don't even talk like that with him. I know I'm he's drink for my water. Kids. Save my career. <laughs> yeah. Smart yeah. idea. I saw the inner comment came in me back. I don't know what you... I hope you ain't crossing with that joint, Mike. <laughs> no way, Jose. With some um, Viagra, right? I, oh, my God. I laced it with Viagra. <laughs> well, there you have it, guys. You guys just watched the episode of Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson. I am your co-host, and a.k.a. Iglesias. Iglesias. You got it. The Gleese and the Glace. The Gleese Glace. And that's it. We Glacey, out. Glacey, Glacey.